All right, guys, what's up? We are going to be going into a Bronze to GM Learn StarCraft stream. Today, we're going to teach you how to execute Waves of Aggression. Now, this is a really good thing because this teaches us a lot of fundamentals about the strategy of ZVP that I'll be going into in a little bit in between the games. For now, let's run through the build order. We're up against a Gold League viewer from my channel. They've closed my stream, so they're not cheating, and we're going to show you guys the build. Now, you can do this with Pool first or Hatch first. It shouldn't change too much. But my viewers have voted to see this off hatchery first. So figure more people want to see hatchery first. We'll show you how to do it. Now, I'm going to try and play somewhat slowly, but I'm still doubling up my workers. I'm still adjusting a few details. Now, to start off, guys, I'm going to set up my camera locations. Anyone who hasn't watched my previous Bronze to GM, obviously, you want to see all the mechanics, understand all the details of what I'm doing there. Bam. What are, oh, what are you doing? What are you doing? That's me spamming through my camera locations. If you don't know what those are, how to set those up, please go back, watch Bronze to GM Zerg. That's over on my main Pig StarCraft channel. Just search Bronze to GM Pig Zerg. It'll come up and you guys can learn all about those mechanical techniques. Now notice we want to go for a 16 hatchery. So we sent that drone down when we we're about 150 to 200 minerals and we were on 16 supply. So it's 16 hatch and then we want to go 18 gas, 17 pool. Now our first overlord is going to queue to hit their natural and then go right into the main and then out the back of their main. Our natural's down, so we'll now go 18 gas and 17 pool. Now, if they come in with a probe, we can attack that with a drone, because he might be cannon rushing. So, a good safety rule to just build from early on, probe in your base, attack it. We could put this drone on a control group, so if I want to, I can always go back there, okay? And pull him back. Now, for now, notice how I'm already, whenever I build drones, I like to click those where I want them to mine. So, these guys are already clicked on the gas. And my next drone that I build is going to fill out the 16 workers on minerals. And I'm going to click him there because that guy doesn't have a friend. Now notice this guy is not cannon rushing me. So I'll just send this guy back to mining. We don't need to chase him all the way across the map. This overlord here was spotting for the cannon rush. It can now go out front of our base. We'll build another overlord to go spot down here. And we've got to think, where am I going to take a third? I'm going to take this third here, this fourth here, this fourth here. We're going to build two queens and four zerglings when our spawning pool finishes, okay? Now, we've already got the overlord on the way. That's going to unsupply block us. And then when you hit 88, you can pull guys off gas. And this is how we do it. We pull two workers off gas. We'll leave one mining. And then we can start link speed and then send those to the natural. We want to keep droning. So just in between actions in the early game, select your hatcheries, build drones. Okay. Now, if you want, you can send your lings across to pressure. We're not going to bother. We're just going to send a drone over to our third. And check it out, guys. We're looking for what tech my opponent's going. So we're going to glance at the Overlord about 2.33 minutes. And I'm actually just going to set him up on a patrol path because he has to build his tech on that pylon or this pylon. And that'll tell us what he's going for. Inject, inject. Build some more drones. Let's get our third base started. Add that to the control group. Double tap the control group. Remake the camera location. Set the rally point. Set the rally point. We're going to build an Overlord and another Overlord. And notice, do you guys see what I'm doing there? When I build overlords, I actually click them on the minimap where I want them to go. And look at that, guys. He is actually going to kill me with a stalker. And he had something there. So we're going to send my lings to go check what that tech structure is. So I'm queuing them to run up the ramp and then run away, okay? It's now time for macro cycle. Inject, inject. Hold down the drone key. Build an overlord. And notice we're just clicking these overlords around to give us great vision of what's going on, all right? We want to build a third queen here. That's a robo, so we know my opponent's playing ground. No worries. I see this pesky probe, so we're going to click on him and then pull back. Okay, guys. About 3.30 is normally when you want to put back on gas, in general, if you pull guys off gas. So we're just rallying some workers back on gas. Time for another macro cycle. Inject. Inject. Build drones, build overlords. So we'll squeeze another overlord or two in. And what's next in the build? Let's take a look. Should be four minutes. So we're doing the beginner's build, 4-minute Roach Warren second gas. And uh, we can change the rally point here because we're going to need more workers, okay? And we also want to build a fourth queen then as well. So these two queens are on a control group now, okay? They're our defense queens. If an oracle were to come in, we'd use those to defend, all right? <clears throat> Next up... We do, um, this is oversaturated, so let's send some of these guys over there. Let's put these guys on gas. And then at about 4.30 to 4.45, we're going to go lair. 
and then two more gases. So this guy can rally to here because we need drones to refill the gases. This base is full, so it now third can both rally there. So a simple way to do that, guys, select the hatcheries, click there, manually select that one and click there. When you take gases like this, this is a really good technique, okay? Just to allow yourself to do that. You notice we don't build spore crawlers unless we actually see an oracle, but we've got plenty of queens and good overlord vision, so we can always move our queens to uh, respond, okay? Now from here, you can see we've actually got over our work account of 52 that we're heading for, so let's just build lots of roaches now. And if we were a bit worried, we might have built those roaches a bit earlier, we do have a generic safety timing of when the roach warren's done, build eight, eight roaches. But because our build's very aggressive, we're meant to stop at 52 workers, four gases, and go for a big roach ravager zergling. All we're doing is just going nothing but roaches, roaches, roaches from here. Now that the lair's done, we want to start roach speed. And what is an amazing habit that you guys should build? Morph an overseer and just click that through their bases. So what have I done? I've got that overseer. It's on my scouting control group, number three. That's going to be like muters or something later on. But for now, it goes down there and it's queued to see what's up. We also should have some map control. So notice we go right click, shift deselect, right click, shift deselect, right click, shift deselect. Now we do a macro cycle, inject, 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 build roaches, build overlords. Now that was very quick. But for those who aren't used to the macro cycle, what do we do? The whole idea is that it's a cycle where we do all of the fundamental tasks so we don't have to think about it so much. And you can still build units in between those cycles if you don't have anything going on. But the idea is the main fundamental machine is a 30 second timer. You can see the gray bar on the hatchery. That is that 30 second timer. Technically it's 29 seconds. 30 seconds is an easy way to think of it. And when those pop out, you wanna go inject, inject, inject. And you wanna spend your lava, build roaches, and save the last few for overlords. A lot of people like to build the overlords first and then the roaches and the lings or the drones. Obviously it's units, then overlords is what I do. A lot of my students these days say they prefer overlords and I'm like, go for it. There's nothing wrong with going for that, okay? Now as roach speed's almost done, that's when you wanna move out for your attack. So what do we do guys? We take a spire, two gases. We build nothing but zerglings. If you want, you can make some ravages. We're not gonna bother in this game. And we're gonna move across the map, okay? Now, what did our overseer see? Lots of gateways, lots of production, lots of cannons in the back. Let's, while we're moving across to our staging point, we're going to macro, 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 build lings, put guys on gas. All of our hatcheries are rallied over here. Notice our drone count's not that good, but that's okay because we're getting on the gas, so we'll be able to build lots of muters behind this. So we're going to attack in, and we're just going to try and shove on in there, see if we can kill some stuff. I'm going to give him a moment here to, to come down and defend because army's here, is it? Okay, so we're just going to try and fight his army. Now, trying to keep your units clumped is a pretty good idea, guys. But uh, if you guys want, you could A-move this and just focus on macro. I think for us, though, let's try and move forward, shoot. Move forward, A-move. Move forward, A-move. Now, what's something we could do here? Whenever you see battery overcharge, box the units that are nearby and do it. And try to do micro like this, guys. If you want to do fancy micro... Do it by boxing sections of units and moving them around. GG. Now we're going to continue the game because we're not done. Let's say that attack fails or we have to pull back for whatever reason or it kills some units but we lose it all. What do we do? First thing you do whenever you come back from a fight is a macro cycle. Inject, inject, inject. If we want to build a round of drones, that's absolutely something that's awesome to do. And you could even do that while, just before going for the attack. You could already build those drones and that would put me up to 65, which is awesome. But then once the attack's done as well, check this out. Oh, we've got all these extra workers. So we can rally them there and build a fourth. We also can Q injects if you've missed injects. You can take a minute, use shift and that queen. Notice we've gone shift, inject, inject. Take a, take a minute to do that. And that way, those injects, one will pop, the next one will start. One will pop, so it's automatically queued up on the hatchery. The next step is you want to build muters. So you build as many muters as you can. Could be five to could be 10, could be 20. And you want to click those, use shift click to get them to the staging point. Sorry. So notice my muters are going to fly along the edge of the map over there. So what do I do behind that? Well, we never go past 66 drones with this style. It's meant to be real, real straightforward, guys. So what we do, though, is we do make a double Evo chamber. The idea, and we'll talk a bit, bit more about it in a moment, is that you do a big Roach Ravagerling attack. They're busy dealing with that. Then you go in with muters 
guess what? The counter to Roachling does not deal with all your, uh, does not deal with muters. Your muters are going to fly on in there. Once they're ready, don't stare at it. Guys, while your units are going to the, the staging zone, keep injecting, keep macroing. Get your 1-1 one, one going. We can get either melee range or range carapace if we want to go pure roach. We could transfer a few workers to our fourth base and even take the gases there if we want. Or you could just transfer workers and not even bother with the gases, fine. And the idea is all you're doing behind the muters is building more roaches, more lings. So imagine all these guys died. You'd have a lot more supply free. You're just building roaches, building roaches. And then basically you micro your muters, right? So you go in, pick off some shit. Oh, kill some guys, kill some guys. Oh, stalkers are here. Shift click those to a new attack angle. Inject, inject, inject. Build roaches. Double tap your muter hotkey. Okay, send the muters back in. Killed some stuff. Oh, 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 he's, he's killing me. Cue them back. Notice I used the minimap. What did I just do? Shift click. I'll show you guys. Just a couple of shift clicks and they're going back to a new staging point. The point is I disengage in one direction and then often come back so they don't know where I'm going. A lot of noobs will do it this way. They're like, oh, you have what you need to defend me? Okay, I'm just going to fly this way and you can see where I'm flying and have plenty of time to prepare. You'll notice what I often do is I'm like, oh, you got plenty of stalkers here. I'm going to... I'm going to go back. And what I might even do is I might even come back to the exact same angle. Depending on what mind game we're playing, right? So his stalker's like, oh, moving over here. You'll see that they're moving all their units over, expecting me to come around the right side of the map. I go back in the exact same angle, right? The point, though, is each time I do that, I'm buying myself time. Why is that so important? Because I need to go inject, 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 build roaches, and then I can focus on my micro. If you focus on your micro right after doing an inject cycle, it doesn't cost you anything because you're spending your money, keeping your lava producing, your upgrades are on the way, right? But if I micro now for 30 seconds, 40 seconds, 50 seconds, a minute, a minute and a half, unless I am absolutely slaughtering everything with this micro, I'm getting diminishing returns. Why am I getting diminishing returns? Because every second that my attention is here and is not at home, it's costing me a lot more, right? It's costing me more because what happens? A hatchery automatically produces lava until it has three lava. After that, it will not produce more lava except from injects. So if you're not spending it, you're literally losing production as a Zerg, okay? So the longer you sit there not doing it, that happens, the longer, you go without injecting, this energy sits on the queen. You can't catch up on that. You can queue the injects, but all that saves you is future actions. It doesn't actually make that. Those injects aren't saying it simultaneously. You queue five injects, it's one has to complete, and then the next one starts, and then that completes, and the next one starts. So it doesn't catch up. So it's very important for you to realize that whenever you're focusing on micro, and this goes for every single race, the longer you're staring at that, the sillier it is, right? The, the more damage you're doing to yourself. So as a general rule, all you can do, float in, kill some shit, and unless you're getting all the craziest damage of all time, after 10, 20 seconds, 15, 30 seconds at most, fly away, disengage. Even if you're doing big damage, one of the most mature things is to build a system as a StarCraft player. The best thing you can do to become a great player is say, yeah, I could probably kill a few more, but he's probably almost there to defend anyway. Pull back keep my macro going and people go but i'm leaving damage on the table man i can't i gotta do the damage now he's protoss and they freak out and i've got high diamond players i coach who do this exact same thing not just it's not just a, a, a bronze problem i gotta kill i gotta attack now i gotta attack now it's very common right and i'm like dude just yes the first 30 seconds is 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 great damage have some urgency sure a, a bit of urgency is good but it does, look how, look how little time it takes me to go home as well. Now you'll see, pro, the problem people have, I think, is they watch too much pro play. You watch someone as fast as me. I can do it while fighting. I literally can click these muters from this base to this base, inject, 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 and then be back at my muters before they even get to the next mineral line. People are like, oh, so that's what I should learn to do. No, come on. People, for some reason, they have this much more realistic thing. When they watch an Olympic sprinter or, or someone who's doing friggin... I think gymnastics is probably the best example. If you guys you guys think of it as your beginner gymnastics people, you're not going to do 
a triple backflip spinny shit spready to the gods, are you? You're not going to do that. You're going to be much more realistic. You're like, oh, let's see if I can do a little, a little bunny hop. Let's see if I can do a wall stand. Not a handstand, a wall stand, right? And, and that's going to be natural. But for a lot of players, they think like, oh, I saw Maru do this. I saw Serral do this. So I'll try to do it at home. And I'm always like, come on, man. What the hell are you doing? Give yourself more time. So what I notice always with every single person I coach, right, is they are constantly interrupting their own actions. So what they'll do, right, is they'll build their muters. And what do they do with their muters, guys? They use shift click and they go, I'm doing what Pig said. I use shift click. But what's different? Look at where they've shift click those muters, guys. They've shift clicked their muters into the friggin' base. So they're there in the middle of a macro cycle. Oh, inject me queen. They start getting attack warnings. They go, oh, what's happened? What's, what's going on? What's, where, where oh, God, they, they just ran into storms and archons and all their muters are dying. And guess what? Now they're going to forget to start 2-2. Two, two. They were going to inject, build units, build overlords, start 2-2, two, two, and then do some other stuff. And, and the difference is, I would have queued my muters to this spot, finished my macro tasks, and then when I had the time to do it, then I would go, all right, let's go focus on my micro. Same reason why you don't you don't queue a drop to unload in a mineral line, unless you're in a very chaotic game and you're saying, there's so much going on, I don't even want to micro this. I just want this thing to go in there and let's just cross our fingers that it works. And a lot of people never develop a system for organizing their actions. And what they do is they end up just... Oh, I'm macroing! I'm macroing! They... they, they, they... And then they go back... To... And I'm like, dude, you injected one hatchery. Every other Next click was a misclick. Box. You've been supply blocked for the last minute and a half and you haven't noticed. Take a deep breath. And keep spending your money and playing organized. And yes, the micro is going to be more unnatural and you're going to get more excited the first time's doing it. But build a system for it. And you should feel a sort of nagging voice in the back of your head that says, Jimmy! Macro! Jimmy! Go do your macro, Jimmy! Jimmy! Come on, Jimmy! Basically, the, the longer you don't look at home, you should hear Brenda the, or Karen, whatever you want to call your queen's voice, saying, Inject the hatcheries! Come on, come home and spend that money! And if you don't hear that, you're going to just stare at this. You'd be like, but I'm killing one extra unit. But one extra unit isn't worth much if you've got 3,000 minerals in the bank, your lava production stagnated, you're not injecting, and you've been supply blocked for the last three minutes. So even glancing at home for 10 seconds to fix those issues is going to give you massive value. Microing your muters to kill two more probes, meaningless in the big picture. So splitting your attention up for Terran, for Zerg, for Protoss, it's very important, guys, and this is why you should always look to interact with your opponents, whether it be a few little harassment points or an attack timing in the game, because it's going to remind you to develop a system around that, and it's going to be really imperfect. So I said every 30 seconds, let's be realistic. If you do this once every minute in an action-packed game, if you remember to go home and do a macro cycle once every minute, which is literally half of the time you, sh you perfect play should be doing it, you're doing way better than most players on the ladder. But just having that said, it's not about it being perfectly timed out. It's not about you playing perfect. It's about you doing it. What most players do is they go, oh, my macro is bad. I just need to macro better. They get excited in the heat of the moment. They, ah, and they freak out. And they just get super into it, right? So it's just take a deep breath. And even if you macro very imperfectly, if there's a system there, you'll be way more consistent than the opposition. And you'll actually do really well. So get in, get in amongst it and have some fun with it. All right, guys, let's go into another game. We've got Siege here, a Platinum 2 Protoss player. It's going to be playing against us. We have no idea what he's going to do, guys. If he cannon rushes or anything, that's totally fine. So let's walk you guys through the build one more time and see if we can kind of touch on any more details here, okay? So first things first, let's get our overlords going. First overlord, and we're just kind of producing off my control groups. Check the natural and then go into the main so we can see what the tech is. This is newbie scouting. We're going to change this scouting as we play the higher level players. We're going to teach you guys uh, a branch with some more advanced scouting um, at the very end of the show, potentially, if we get there. Otherwise, we will at least teach you how to react to said scouting. Whereas even if we scout what's up, we're not really going to react to it. So about 150 to 200 minerals on 16 supply. You want to bring a drone down, guys. That's our natural. This will be our third. Just setting up those camera locations a little bit here. And remember, the moment that's down, we add it to our control group, build another drone, center that camera location, set the rally points, 
try to get these things done as early as possible. Now, what you're going to do here is notice that these guys all have a job. First one puts us on 16 out of 16 on minerals. Next one builds gas. Next one builds spawning pool. You can just build this habit of knowing what each drone does. You can already have them going to the correct position. And you can tell if you're doing this build correctly because you get the money for each thing pretty much right as it goes down. Remember, we're going to play safe, guys. We don't know if he's going to cannon rush or not. So we'll move that overlord back to check for cannons. If you want to just leave it over the hatchery, that's fine. Nothing wrong with that, guys. And we can put three guys on gas straight away because I really like to make sure we get that link speed nice and quick in case there's any shenanigans. Now, this is the third base. We'll take the fourth in the top and the fifth down there on this map. And we've got the rally point here at the front. I'm going to build a 20th drone here, which, of course, we can uh, put down on this mineral patch here because that doesn't have a buddy. And we'll build another overlord. So we'll put this overlord out front, that third. This overlord can go out here watching this path. This guy, we're not being cannon rush, so we can go back to droning. Two queens, four links. Okay. And if you want to send two of those links to scout, feel free to start doing that, guys, but we're not going to bother teaching that. It's a bit too many things to manage. So we pull two off gas, we start link speed. See, I've done this a million times. It's all like clockwork, so I'm going to do it a lot quicker than you guys. Start slow, but just learn the order so it makes sense to you guys, and you'd be surprised how quickly you'll get better. Now, normally it's after those four links, it's the first drone that builds on the natural, can come and build the third base. You can even control group that to make it a bit easier for yourself. Links sometimes want to come over just to make sure it doesn't get blocked. So inject, inject. Oh, guys, we forgot to rally out of my main. What a noob. We've got to change the rally point. After you inject those two, you build a third hatchery. And then we want to build a third queen and an overlord. So it's 32 third hatch, 31 third queen, and 33 overlord. Now, we're not going to bother using this queen to spread creep and swap her role just yet. That's a pretty advanced thing. Once again, my opponent's tech is really slow. And this is something that happens where at high level, people's tech has already been down for a good 30 seconds at this point. Oh, Siege has actually got a good Stargate timing. Never mind, guys. I was about to rag on Siege. We'll put over here. It's not super safe, but it's kind of safe. Now, we're not going to react to scouting at all in this because this is the beginner version of the build, guys. What are we doing? We're just building drones, building overlords. Our injects are now synced up. This one's a creep queen. So... Notice how, though, every overlord is getting spread out across this to get this nice big ring of vision. And uh, and that's going to give us a lot of warning of what's going on. So, uh, we haven't put back on gas yet, so let's do that. We can change the rally point back into the main when we do that, about 3.30, because you're going to build a roach warren, a second gas, all this sort of stuff there as well. Um, if we want, we can transfer workers, but not the most important thing. So, um, we also, at four minutes, we want to build a fourth queen a roach warrant and a second gas, remember. Now, I know there's an oracle coming, but I am purposely going to show you guys uh, a scenario where we don't notice it because we're too busy focused on the build, okay? Building guys for the gas. Let's put this guy on the gas. Um, awesome. Okay, and we can also transfer some guys over to there. Awesome. Let's just spread some creep. Put another creep trimmer there and there. Oh, shit, guys. Okay, so what do we do here when an oracle comes in? Good micro is you can stack those up. He should have killed a lot more workers there, but it, it is what it is. <laughs> we got away with some murder there. Oh, look at this, guys. So if you see Adepts come, build at least 10 Zerglings for uh, two Adept pressure, okay? Just a little tip there. Let's inject, inject, and inject. And uh, our Lings will just click on these Adepts. Oh, my God. Now, now, because we've seen an Oracle, we will react. Only if you guys notice an Oracle, it's not in the build, but if you do notice an Oracle build a spore in each base and that's what you want to do now in the midst of all this guys where chaos it's disorganized what do you do when you're distracted deep breath macro cycle inject 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 build drones build overlords and then you go okay i did a macro cycle now how do i do part of my build don't get distracted by this what's the next part of my build lair and third and fourth gas was meant to go down at about 4 30 4 45 and I'll give you guys a drone marker for that. Remind me to do that after this game. So what we're going to do, we'll take those gases, um, we'll put these guys back up here as well. And what's our drone count? We want to be up at 52 drones, remember. So we'll build a few more drones, and then we're going to keep on macroing. Inject, inject, inject. And we're going to swap into roach production now. Roaches, lings, preparing for that big attack timing that we want to do. So put guys on gas. Let's fix up that saturation in the main. Remember, after stasis trap, you do need to do that. Inject, inject, inject. 
Now, once again, we've had really bad map vision. So if you guys can make a habit of these lings being out of the map, that's going to be really nice. It really just, just helps out a lot. Now, um, I've only got one queen here. Oh no, that's annoying. Inject, inject, inject. Build more roaches, build more lings, guys. So if you do notice it, pull your drones away. And what you want to do is you want to do it like this, and then you send one drone back, okay? Set it off, and then you send everyone back to mine. That's the best reaction you can do, but it's not too important. Let's start Roach Speed. Now, Roach Speed's really late this game, so I could modify the build and do all these advanced things. We're not going to do that! Stick to the build! It's just going to be a bigger, later, scarier attack, okay? That's going to be more committed. That's fine. We're going to spread some creep here. I've got minerals, so I'll start a fourth hatchery. You might be like, well, isn't that changing the build? Nope. That is a rule that you always have in StarCraft, guys. If you've just done a macro cycle, inject, 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 build roaches, build lings, and you're still floating minerals, build hatcheries until you're not floating minerals. I built a macro hatch and a fourth base. These are not things I'm... Oh, so you're droning these? No, no, no. It's a product. It's like building an extra barracks. That's all this is, okay, guys? That's all you're doing. That's all you're doing. Build some overlords here. Lots and lots of overlords um, to keep the production going. Inject, inject, inject. Build roaches, build roaches, build lings, okay? Now, remember when your lair's done? If you can make an overseer just to fly through their base, that's a good habit to build. You guys probably won't remember to do that. Pros forget to do it. I also see an observer in my base. Pro thing you can do is make an overseer and just patrol it between your bases. We're not going to bother. Why are we not going to bother? Because, because it's not something you guys are going to remember to do. Now, Roach Speed's almost done, so it's finally time for us to go, guys. And it uh, looks like our opponent has a pretty big army of Zealots and Immortals and Sentries. If you want to make Ravages, you can. Uh, we're not going to bother. We're just going to go over here. Let's get a Spire, by the way, and two gases. And uh, let's go for a big fight. Inject, inject, inject if we can. And then, okay, nothing but army focus now. Oh, cancel that fourth base. Oh, no. I should have let that die, guys. What can I say? Gonna A move here. Obviously, I could have moved forward and killed some more units. Could have focused fire and It is what it is. Okay, so we're gonna A move to the staging point, which I guess will be about here. And then what do we do? Inject, inject, inject. Are our hatcheries hotkeyed? Yes, they are. Is our spire on the way? It is. Let's put guys on gas. And guys, let's already be droning. So we're gonna build a big round of drones for that base. A big round of drones for this base. And I'll even take the gases on the fourth, because why not? And then guess what? But Pig, you delayed your attack. Good, I delayed my attack so I could finish my macro, guys. Finish your macro. Stop interrupting your own macro cycles. Get in there and F your opponent up, okay? Oh, oh, this is kind of a scary position. So I'm a little bit afraid. I'm going to pull away from the battery overcharge because I don't think I can get on top of that, okay? So we're going to try and pull back and let that thing run out. So I can fight over here. That's fine. I just don't don't think I can get in top on top to focus that. So we're just going to pull back a little bit. Okay, it should be almost out now. So now we can now we can aim move forward again. If you guys know exactly what you want to micro, go for it. But do it individually where possible, guys. Box these guys. Move them forward. Box these guys. Move them forward. Try not to do a whole control group micro syndrome because it can be really bad, okay? So we're going to let these guys die now. We're going to move them to the corner of the map and do that. I'm going to build some, uh, some lings and roaches at home just to be my new army while these guys all kill each other cue them to just kill themselves. All right, guys, what do we do when we finish microing? Inject, inject, inject. And then we're going to basically do a macro cycle. We're going to build muters. So we're going to build as many muters as we can. 13. Oh, no, we're taking damage. Now, if you're super pro, control click the drones, click them in a pocket, and that's going to save a lot of your drones. Or you can box them, whichever one you prefer there. We took some damage. Now, how do we replace those? Build two drones, click, reselect hatcheries. Build two drones, click, reselect hatcheries. Build four drones. In this case, we only had three lava. It'll do. Go there. More zealot run by. We saw that on the minimap. So rather than looking at it, guys, select army, A move on minimap. Select muters, A move on minimap. Wait a second. We don't want to show the muters, do we? Oh, because that's going to give him warning. So those muters, no. ground army's got it. They're queued once again to a staging point. Not into the base, staging point. Inject, inject, inject. Looks like uh, that queen died, so we'll use this queen now. Let's also transfer out of the main, which we're always going to have to do, usually just after our roach attack happens. And what do we do? Oh, we forgot our evo chambers, guys. We forgot our evo chambers. So let's hotkey those. Oh, look at this. Trying to build a base back here. So we'll take out that static D. Bone is macroing really well. And uh, we're going to micro, but remember, we can only micro for so long. This is very high value damage being on top of probes, right? Very high damage. But uh, also... You know what? Macro is important. Q 
keep keep them out of there. Inject, inject, inject. Build roaches. Because remember, we're at 66 drones. You can hover over this top, right? 65, 66 drones, all we ever need. So we're just building roaches, starting our 1-1. One, one. There we go. Cool, macro is done. Wait a second. We got distracted, guys. Inject, inject, inject. Inject, inject, inject. Inject, inject, inject. For a super pro, we can be like, oh, Q injects on that hatchery as well, or tell this queen to Q and inject on that hatchery. But it's not important, and you want this to be quick and take low attention is the most important thing. Why were your roaches killing themselves, guys? Uh, because I didn't want to win the game right there, so I can show you guys the next part of the build. Let's, because you guys are going to execute this attack way later, way worse. You're going to have less army at a later time, and you're going to throw it away because you guys are bad at StarCraft. So... I'm trying to simulate being bad at StarCraft like you guys. Um, it's a joke, guys. So we're massing roaches. The muters are going to go in for another wave. We just did a macro cycle before entering the micro situation, guys. Oof. Okay, so this is kind of scary because there's cannons. But notice how you can do very fancy muter micro where you clump them up by stick clicking underneath them. Or you can spread them out by clicking further away. And you'll see they start to spread out. Just a, a hot little thing for you guys to notice on, okay? Let's hide in the back because there's some stuff happening at home and I need to look at it. So let's A-move this army and let's do a macro cycle. This base is taking damage. Let's build more roaches. Luckily, he forgot Psystorm. It's very good for me. Now, obviously, because there's a lot going on, I could click my muters in here and try to do some damage. And that's going to be a, I'm not microing them, but the game's chaotic enough that I will enter them into a fight without even monitoring it, right? Basically, I click them on that cannon and I'm saying, the game is chaotic and things are happening. Let the, let the cards fall where they may, let the dice rolls land where they may, you know? And that's something which you want to be careful making that sort of decision, but uh, it can be really good. Now, in this situation where the game gets messy, this is where people freeze up and stop doing their basics. So this is where you want to waistband your micro boner. And you want to do a macro boner move. Fourth base, fifth base, sixth base, seventh base. Okay, so what do we do? We boxed the workers at our base and we just went around and we just built like five hatcheries. This one got cancelled, so I will rebuild that. But notice how we're just building hatcheries all over the map now. And that's going to help us spend that money. Let's start 2-2. Two, two. Let's do a macro cycle. He's being a bit of a piece of shit. So we're going to build a few muters to kill this warp prison that's up there. Now notice I'm already building the drones to replenish this base. This is a pro gamer move, guys. So I said, all these drones are going to die. So I built three, clicked there, built three, clicked there, built like six or seven or eight and clicked them on the minerals. Do things ahead of time. Do things ahead of time. It's a very, very good move. Now where does warp prism hide, guys? I don't know, but my overlord vision sucks, right? So I'm building overlords right now, even though I don't need them. And I'm clicking them all over the map to get vision. Make an overlord speed. Those muters, remember, I decided to just let them do their thing and not look at it for a long time. These guys are going to kill that prism as it comes back in. My roaches are going to come back up into my main. Some very nice run buys from Siege. I love it. Now, what about mining? Let's grab workers. Let's put guys on gas. Take gases there and gases there. So we're going to focus on these as our bases. Add them to our hotkeys. And if you have some sort of late game tech, that's always nice. You can use that. If not, that's fine. But I think what we should really focus on is just winning the game now, since we're taking way too long to do it. And it's, we're taking all this damage and the, the game's getting really messy. So our opponent's using all these run buys and stuff. It's really annoying, man. So I don't know, I'm just going to click those roaches in there and the rest of my army's just going to basically do a giant all in it. Well, not all in because I got money in the bank, but a big attack to try and win. These muters are somehow still alive, guys. Um, he's, he's, he's baiting them in though. Now, never really attack in a column like that, guys. You want to always clump up before you move in for the attack. At this stage of the game, if you guys are maxed out, it's totally okay to really just focus on the army for a full minute straight. So we're going to purposefully not macro and just focus on the fight this time. Because, hey, I'm maxed out and this fight's probably going to decide the game. So, as much as I talk about remember to macro and this sort of stuff, there's also situations where it's totally okay to miss macro and that's just kind of part of the game. So notice we're just moving up, A moves, just aggressive starter step, right click, then A move, right click, then A move. GG, well played. Very nice run by his mate. Um, 
yeah, so I think what's what's funny here is obviously we very purposefully are showing you guys a few things. If people always ask me, like, how can you not build spores every game? So what do I often see when I'm coaching people in Platinum League, guys? They let two minutes in the game, three minutes in the game, start throwing spore crawlers down in their base. Huge mistake. An oracle cannot get to you that fast, neither can a Dark Templar, but each time you build a spore crawler, you're killing a drone. Now, obviously, if we scout the Stargate, or we scout an oracle, we absolutely are able to just put a spore down in each base reactively, as long as it's no earlier than, I would say, four minutes. Um, even though this oracle will technically get there a bit before 420, and a spore takes 20 seconds to build, as a general rule, if you guys are in bronze, silver, gold, and most of Platinum League, it's very unlikely an oracle gets to your base before then, and queens defend pretty well against the first oracles anyway. It's only as more oracles come in and the repeat damage that can get very painful. So I've also got great overlord vision. If I if I wanted to, I could have just moved my queens up here, had spore crawlers building here at four minutes, and guess what? 421, that spore would finish in the main, and we'd be all good. But I kind of wanted to take some damage to show you guys, hey, I'm not ready for it. All I have is one queen here. This is where things could go terribly wrong. Thankfully, Siege messed up the micro a bit. So why did Siege mess up the micro, guys? The firstborn shall persevere. Because Siege just clicked it in and then looked at home to macro. You guys see that? So Siege here just did exactly what we were pointing out with the muters, guys. Don't click them in and then go look at your macro. That's some pro gamer shit. It's above your pay grade. Now, if your robo was already control grouped, you wouldn't need to look at home to start that, right? Maybe it is on the control group. Actually, maybe the robo, the gate, and the stargate are all on the same control group. But either way, you can tab to it. You don't need to look at home to do that, right? So, so that's really, uh, really cool. How do you react to a rush battle cruiser? They do that in EU Diamond 3? Uh, my beginner opening beats that. The the beginner roach build should should usually kill that. So obviously if you're going past that, um, that is an awkward point where a lot of people don't have the right D, but we're not really talking about ZDT right now, World Club, so sorry. Not 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 the time to do it, but definitely another day we'll uh we'll be talking about it. So yeah. Definitely it's something where you've got to be careful. My opponent's trying to do a lot of harassment at once here, which is really cool to see. But it is a lot of things going in at once, and I think it could have been organized a little bit more and slowed down a little bit. But I do like to see those stasis traps, which is really cool from Siege. But that first Oracle could easily have just been shift clicked on the drones and killed like four or five. Um, in this case, the Oracle should be hidden in the back so it can keep coming in and throwing spores like there or there rather than coming in on the opening side as well. But, haven't played these new maps, no doubt. Not quite used to where those oracles want to go. You lost a queen on the second run by. Do you replace it? Yep. Do you always keep a few around later in the game? Uh, I mean, basically the way we're teaching you guys, you have one creep queen and just injecting queens, and that's it. Just a four queen build. So my injecting queen ended up replacing her, but I probably should have built a new creep queen anyway, just so I could keep spreading it. But I mean, we're, we're teaching a very, very beginner build here, so yeah. Um, in general, guys, if you don't know what's happening out there, you're worried, you die to a lot of aggression, you can build eight roaches the moment that roach horn finishes. Now, the reason I wasn't doing that in this game is because we saw oracles flying around. If, you're, if your opponents go on Stargate and has oracles flying around, there's never a need to build roaches straight away because they're building flying units. They can't have a bunch of zealots or adepts arriving. So that's something to, to remember. Um, yeah, yeah. But if we didn't know it was happening or we like it, we can absolutely build those roaches and uh, have a good time. Cool, GG's, 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 GG's. I died to DT Warpin, says Fappleton. No worries, mate. You'll get better at scouting as you go on. Um, in general, if we were doing this build here, we didn't have spores at all because we only really build those reactively. Um, you do have a lair, so you're meant to make overseers uh, if they go Dark Templar. If they rush DTs super, super early, um, do try to throw spores in each base. But uh, yeah, generally, you're not going to bother about blind countering it. At this point in development, a lot of people get 
stuck in trying to think, how do I deal with this? How do I deal with that? This build's not safe first, everything. It's a mindset you want to snap out of. If you guys can just focus on getting a little bit crisper at spending your money and working through this build order quicker, you'll find that, yeah, you might lose the occasional game to a quick Dark Templar or maybe a battle cruiser or whatever it is, right? Depending on the matchup. But I wouldn't stress too much about it. I'd say just keep working on your fundamentals because there's a thousand things that can happen in a StarCraft game. If you guys are trying to play safe first everything when you don't have your fundamentals down yet, you're basically just gonna get stuck in Silver League or something like that. You'll never be able to get out of there because you're so focused on blocking every possible option. You're investing in all these different safety mechanisms really early in the game. So don't stress too much. If you lose a game to DTs, that's part of the StarCraft journey. And losing's a really good part of developing your play as well. So don't stress too much over it. Um, potentially, you know, if it happens a bunch of times, that's part of the flexibility you learn and start. You're like, man, I've, no, I've, I've lost like three games out of 10 to Dark Templar Pig. Cool. Maybe you build a spore crawler every game in your natural at four minutes. And then when the DTs walk in, you can kill them. And you're like, but they kill my third. Not the end of the world. That's okay, dude. You know, you'll you'll make an overseer, retake a third and a fourth at the same time. You can do your roach timing off 44 workers rather than 52. So just two bases of workers. That's totally fine as well. There's a lot of flexibility inherent in StarCraft. And a lot of people go, okay, cool. Like, you know, th there should be a correct way to play and you just do this and you win. But StarCraft's a strategy game. So if you try to cover every option, you're basically just doing everything poorly rather than a few things very well. So if you're trying to be safe first, Dark Templar and Oracles and a charge lot all in attack and an immortal attack and a disruptor drop and also your opponent building four bases really early and going carriers, well, you just can't cover all those because those all require different things. So that's why just developing a build, having some attacks in it, learning to play aggressive, and you're not going to be able to handle everything that comes your way, but uh, you will with time really limit the number of problems that you run into. So obviously, guys, looking at our build notes over here, um, one thing I'd like to add in here is um, let's add about, that should be about 4.30. And this, this is not much later, right? So it's basically... Um, layer plus third and fourth cast. So, so this is basically one production cycle <clears throat> after the uh, the Roach Warren second, you know, after the, after the 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 Roach Warren, etc. So it's it's just it's not much later. We got to get that layer and those gases up a little bit quicker. Other than that, I think we're good. I think the build's pretty well done. All right, guys, we're gonna be playing against our first diamond player. However. He's a bit of a cheesier diamond player and uh, definitely might just do some dumb weird stuff to throw us off our game. But hey, that's part of the ladder and part of the experience. So let's see how this build fares. Now, one thing I did change in the build, previously I said about 4.30, 4.45, we want to be building the um, third and fourth gas and the lair. And I don't really like game timers, but the general idea there is you want to do that basically like one production cycle after the Roach Warren, the second gas, the fourth queen, all that stuff goes down. So it's not too big of a difference. Um, it's just one of those those things where it's like, hey, let's if, if we're a bit if you're a bit behind, you're doing this at your own pace. It's just hey, that's the next step of the build. And if it's a little bit later than that, that's fine. If it's a bit earlier. It's not the end of the world. The, the idea is to make sure you have your own kind of internal rhythm when you're following builds so that you can copy it. Remember guys, look at this. Rally the drones. They've already all got their jobs. Mine minerals, make a gas, make a pool. Now we're gonna take these front bases uh, because this half base in the back is kind of particular to this map. So I won't be taking that just to kind of simulate a more normal map here than Moon Dance. These are of course the new maps that should be on ladder very shortly. <clears throat> So, what do we do, guys? Notice they're rallied to the gas. So, guys, you can already rally your hatchery down like that. And notice I rally them to different sides of the mineral lines just so the drones are naturally spread out. But you're like, oh, but then weren't the drones? No, no, because I make sure I've rallied all three drones onto gas. If we want to do it like this, we can do that. Get the all three on gas straight away. And uh, that's just going to make our build way more organized, okay? So, first overlord should be going through that main, remember, to see what's going on. And this Overlord can go out front, see if there's a Depths coming. Get the other Overlord out front there, see if there's Depths coming there. Really, really building that Ring of Vision. So we want an Overlord here, an Overlord here. We'll have to get one down here, one up here as well, and then on the edges. So 
There we go. We've got uh, two queens and just two zerglings on the way this game. Accidentally built an extra pair of... Uh, an extra drone. Pull two guys off gas. Start link speed. Oh, this is beautiful. Build order's lining up, fam. He forgot his second pylon. It's very late. But <laughs> that's okay. <laughs> so we just hang up there, see what tech goes down. And he didn't scout at all. So fair enough. Now let's take our, our drone, go to the third. So we want to build that just after injecting. So remember, even if you have 300 minerals, good idea, guys. If your build's tight, you want to go inject, inject. Then build the third. So it's 32 third base. Then we want to get the third queen. And then we want to get the overlord. This should all fit together in one cycle, one batch of actions. If you don't do that, you're going to be in trouble, guys. You're going to forget. You're going to get supply blocked really bad. You're going to have a bad time. So first things first, guys, we don't see any tech. He's got a stalker. He's going to deny my scouting. If you start losing an overlord, what do you do? I just built two overlords. I'm going to... And, and even a third one would be totally fine. Inject, inject. It's macro cycle time, guys. Guess I'll build one more overlord just to be safe. And we're just holding the drone key down. But because we started building those overlords well before it died, we're avoiding the supply block. So you guys want to have that as sort of a piece of muscle memory. So at this point, guys, let's send some lings across the map because we don't really know what's going on. And I'm going to build some new lings to be on my control group, okay? And remember, about 3.30, you want to put back on gas so we can grab those two drones. And if I did that from the eggs, that would have been even more pro. Now, you can wait a second after the inject. Make sure the queens have energy. Inject, inject. Hold down that drone key. And overlords as well will need to come out. And we can add this queen to this control group if we want. Because guess what, guys? It's Roach Warren and second gas time. Let's put these guys back on mining. Change the rally point here. Keep putting drones and overlords. Okay, so what's going on here, guys? Looks like there's an adept. We'll just A move that, and then we'll A move that. Let's go inject, inject. If there's ever an adept in there, guys, don't worry, just A move it. And then notice how I went A move and then queued back on the mining. Cute little thing you guys can do, right? And now we've done one more production cycle. So more, more drones, more overlords here. Let's take the third and fourth gas in the lair. Remember, we want to do that about 4.30, right after the next uh, production cycle. I did forget my fourth queen for a little bit, so we're just building that now. And, oh, what's this? Big attack. Okay, so what do you do against attacks, guys? Grab everything, pull it back, build some spines. I'm building roaches right now. And what do you do? You keep injecting and building overlords. I'm fixing up my worker saturation. Keep building roaches, overlords, roaches, roaches, overlords. Big all in attack from him, guys. We've built some spines. We've pulled back. If you're if you if you're confident, you can even send a drone out to take a new third base. Notice we're just trying to get back in here. These roaches popping in a very dangerous area, so we're trying to try to get back. He he kills us. Oh, he clicked on my spine there. But notice we we pulled back. We gave ourselves time to build units, and only then did we fight and there's no micro to do guys keep injecting keep building overlords keep injecting keep building overlords okay good attack by him really good attack by him all right we'll keep chasing him and we can now build that new third base up here where my fourth was gonna, gonna be that's where i was planning that to be because i have so many units i'm gonna chase him back okay i, I only if, because the numbers are good for me but if you want if you don't feel confident with it, you're like, ah, this is weird. You can definitely pull back. Approach speed, inject, inject. The important thing is to keep spending your money. You're getting further ahead. You've got a new third base coming up. He doesn't have a third. We can check with our Zerglings if we really want. We can make that Overseer. Might have one in the back, but that's all right. These two Queens trying to hang on right now. I'm gonna respread some creep. What are we doing, guys? Build Overlords, build Roaches. If you want, we can move the spine up here as well. Obviously, I can actually just take him down, but why not just wait for the natural strong point of Roach Speed? Why, why go fight now? Instead, I can put my attention to spending my money, building overlords, building drones. I can put another drone for here if I want. Overlords, drones, overlords, drones. Roach, uh, or overlords, roaches is what I should say. Sorry, I'm building roaches, not drones, guys. I just keep saying drones, but what I mean is keep producing. Um, so really cool surprising attack for him guys, but we see that our build naturally has pretty safe timings So uh, so it's not too bad for us, even though we didn't really react until those units walked into our third base And 
as we get better, we can actually pay a bit more attention to our scouting and really develop that. Um, there's no point where it's like, oh, you know, you're not meant to scout at all until you're X level. Don't, don't ever listen to people that say that, guys. What I will say is there's more important skills for you to focus on. So if you're not using control groups, that's going to be a higher priority. So notice we're going to move down that ramp just so that sentry can't do anything to us. And we're just going to move on top. Why am I fighting now, guys? Roach speed just finished. So I feel a lot more confident. <laughs> My grand plan! And that it is not a base, but look, he hit his gateways in the back. Very clever. GG. GG. Well played. So one thing is uh, with this map, because you don't actually have an overlord pillar, if you're not sacrificing your first overlord, you can send it around the back, guys, to here. And you can actually check the gases, and you can also poke in and see if they've got that third in the back. That's, that's specific to this map. So if we go back a little bit here, we can see... <clears throat> So with this uh, Learn StarCraft stream, this sort of mini Bronze to GM where we're focusing on this build, guys, we didn't even get a chance to really do our attacks, right? I probably should have been dropping a Spire there at the end of that game, but we didn't even really get there. It was completely game over, and we just kind of reacted. So we were just doing our build as usual. The great thing about doing a build that naturally is planning to stop at 52 workers and make nothing but Roachling is that... We were almost at the limit of our droning anyway, right? We're at 45, building four more drones. If I wasn't supply blocked here, I would have already built enough drones to go up to 52, which is like the total amount. So even with no scouting of this, but just droning to 52, then building roaches and lings, which is the game plan, we actually stop this uh, six gate attack, which it's a fake nexus. And a fake second gas. Ah, <laughs> I thought it was a mistake that he didn't put on the second gas. He definitely, definitely, uh, very, very cute. <laughs> oh, this is a funny build. This is a very funny build, man. I like it. But yeah, um, this this goes back to the welcome to Starcraft video, guys. If you're a surprise, whenever there's an attack that surprises you, just grab all your shit, pull it way back, give up a base, give up some drones, give up a hatchery if you have to. Focus on building. Supply, army, supply, army, gather your stuff, and then fight. So that calm response, it'll make you guys survive so many situations. The number of times I see people get attacked and they run out and fight it, and I'm like, dude, have you even looked at the army? They're like, no, I had no idea that was coming. I don't even know what the army is. I'm like, why are you going to fight it? They're like, oh, I need to defend my base. And I'm like, are you sure you're going to win that fight? And they're like, no. And I'm like... Then give up the base! Always, always. I mean, you don't lose the game by losing a hatchery or a nexus. You lose the game by losing your army and then just getting overwhelmed. Now, I didn't even have to pull drones. But if I was a bit more surprised, and I might have to pull drones with my army. And if you are going to pull workers, you need to do it before your army dies. Because workers don't do damage, they tank. And they tank very well versus things like stalkers. So, if I was going to be more respectful to his push here, or if I was unsure, I would pull this mineral line and A move it here as well. I would put them on control group three, army two, control group three. And then the moment I'm confident the fight's being won, I would click the drone control group number three, click them back on the minerals. So maybe a bunch of my drones are damaged, but not quite dead. And that way I'm not throwing too many workers away, right? Because the worker pull, it is a last resort, but it's a very effective last resort. And in this scenario, think about it. You might be like, oh, pig, if I'm not as quick as you, I'd die to this attack. Would you? Would you really? We can lose 20 workers and still be ahead. Because even if we lose 20 workers, if we've got a big ball of roaches, we've got a better army. He doesn't have an army that scales. There's no blink. There's no twilight. There's no forge, no robo, no stargate. Guys, he's got next to no mining. We can redrone way quicker than he can. Rebuild our third, do all this stuff. So in this scenario, this is something you guys should always check. When you get all in... Rewind the game and go, how many workers did he have? And even better, if you can do that, where well, you're still on the victory screen and you go, holy shit, that was a scary attack. Mm, how many? Do a quiz. Do yourself. I call this the rewind game where you say, ooh, did he play, was that 30 probes? Yeah, I think it was 30. I think it was a 30 pro ball in. I think he had the full main base, 22 workers, maybe just eight or eight or nine workers on the natural. Just from the timing that it hit, that's my game sense. And then you load up the replay, you hit rewind, you check, and you go, oh, he was only on 24. He was even more all in than I thought. 
And what that does is it improves your understanding of the game. A lot of people go through StarCraft where they're like, Oh, he attacked me with some stuff! They don't look at the game timer when they got attacked. They don't look at the economic variation. They go, man, he killed me with Stalkers. Stalkers are really unfair. It's like, hey, wait a second. You built 20 more workers than him. Come on, mate. <laughs> Obviously, it's going to be a scary push if you've built 20 more workers and he's put all that money into army instead. It's all a learning experience. And if you lose that game, you might learn even more than if you win, right? But even when you win, look for what you can do better. Look to understand what happened in that game so you've got the context in your brain. All right, guys, we're going into a game now against Diamond One. Uh, Protoss, I believe. Diamond One? I think it's Diamond One. Uh, Brainless, um, who who is going to be a bit of a step up from the competition we've faced so far. But that was good. Hopefully, we can get someone who beats me or at least makes it close to beating Thanks me. For the Bezos Maybe forces me to do a bit of a different reaction or puts me in deep water. Maybe we'll get to see one of the weak points of the build. I'm, I, I don't ever claim that a build I'm doing is just going to win you every game. That's not how StarCraft works, guys. It's a strategy game. So there's a thousand different things that can happen. And uh, over time, you know, you start with some things that are generally pretty solid. But over time, you've got to learn how to scout and react and read the game. And that's inevitably something that you have to do. So guys, check it out. He's blocking me base. Now, if they're blocking your base, you want to send that drone over to the third. So if you are wanting to be more advanced with this build, and we'll build another drone while we wait for him to get there. So 17 hatch on the third. If you are wanting to be a bit more advanced with your build order, you can actually send that drone at 35 seconds, which is way before 150, 200 minerals. And then if you see the probe coming in, you just go straight to the third and continue with your build. So that's what you'll see pro gamers and higher level players do. So you can see now we're transitioning a little bit into a higher level of play. So you know what, guys? Um, you can still do the Baboon Overlord through the main all the way to Masters. I even do it in GM sometimes, just queue the Overlord. But I'm going to show you guys my more advanced scouting technique that I actually use myself. Um, and no, either way, we're definitely going to be reacting with our build order. Because now that we're playing Diamond players, we can't just be playing one-size-fits-all StarCraft. My opponents are going to be way too tight. I still was playing one-size-fits-all in that last game a little bit. Partially because, well, my information was denied, right? He killed my overlord, but we were doing the, the real basic scouting. So we're going to try and be a little bit more, hey, is it Stargate? Is it Robo? And you guys can see in the notes, exclamation mark learn, by the way, if you guys want the notes. Uh, sorry, I should have put that in the title for you guys, for those who are watching live, but down below in the description if you're watching later on, on YouTube. So these guys are actually going in a different control group, these lings, and I'm going to cue them to uh to go in from two different angles so even if he tries to block them from going in them combined with the overlord is going to make it really difficult for him to uh do that now we've got an overlord going to go out there another overlord out here uh okay so check it out we're going to split these lings off and we're going to split those lings up to do a circuit of the main to come in from two sides okay going to keep droning going to inject the main now obviously my first injects are a little bit off sync which does suck a little bit but it is what it is come down here take our third and then what do we do queen and then overlord right same as always guys we're not changing we're not changing the fundamentals here now there's an adept coming in so i'll build four more lings to deal with that and we'll remove our lings and queens over here while continuing to drone okay now what did we see guys our lings did get in this overlord we're going to send that to safety now if the lings were being blocked then that would be different, but check it out. That's a Twilight Council, okay? So we've seen what we need to see. Let's go back and continue our macro cycles now. This one's gonna become a Creep Queen now. And we're droning, we're building Overlords, which are now going on the edges of the map. And guess what? We know it's a Twilight, so it's time for our Ground Branch, guys. So we are gonna do the Ground Branch of the build. Okay does mean at four minutes or just before then we need to be going for the uh the roach horn the second gas okay all right so let's go for the roach horn and the second gas at four minutes <clears throat> uh we can still build a fourth queen I'll, I'll build that why not let's get these guys here and uh what else changes in that ground branch 445 will build a spore in each base as well, okay? Now let's put some lings out there. 
Uh, and this is enough drones, 45, so we should definitely be building overlords. If we want, we can get some more gases. Uh, oh, it's normally three gases and lair all at that time? Oh, that doesn't make sense, does it? What the hell? Does it? Okay, we're, we're, we're going to try it a different way anyway. All right, we're starting to build roaches for safety because the roach warren's done. And we'll build a spore in each base at 445. Um, these guys are on my creep king. I saw something over here. I don't know what it is. I'm just building overlords and roaches right now. And we see some blurry boys coming in. Oh, no! So, obviously, you could try to block the spore and stuff. Now, full disclosure, I knew this was coming, guys. Because it's frameless, and he likes doing this build. Now, I'm going to actually keep droning here, guys. And we're even going to cancel some of these spores just to limit the amount of... Uh, damage and we do manage to move spores down so what did i do guys i built a spore in the main and then moved it down and you know what i'm actually figuring out which advanced version of this build i want to teach you guys so we're gonna review the build after this game talk you guys through it for now we are at 52 drones um we don't have the gases though which is a big problem so this is why I, uh, I really messed up on the build in terms of, of all that stuff. So we'll make an overseer just to scout what's up. But our lair is also really late. Oh my god, this is so late. Okay, these guys could all go on gas. I guess we can build lots of overlords here. Okay, got Crete going everywhere. And we do have a fourth guy there. Okay. So we can build a few more drones here, because um, we're only at 51, so a couple more drones is always not the worst. And we'll go roach speed. Yeah. Brainless like me loves his overlord drop. So I figured he would do this. But um, I did stick to the standard timing. I think I maybe built the spores a second early. And you can see if they hit a really tight DT drop, it's not fast enough. And this is something a lot of people always point this stuff out. They'll go, hey, your build guide, X thing isn't fast enough because this is meant to hit at this timing. And I go, yeah, that's what a pro gamer will hit though. And they go, well, I have that. People do that to me in my league. And I go, mm, occasionally. But if you're playing safe against the timing that Maru or Hero is going to hit you, I guarantee you, you're doing things way too early compared to everything else you're doing. So unless you're up against that specific scenario, if you build spores at 4 minutes 10 or 4 minutes every game for DTs, that's only going to pay off 1 in a billion games. It's not going to pay off very much. So you got to be real careful. All right, guys, let's get the sixth gas here. Um, one last round of roaches. As roach speed's almost done, let's move across the map. Um, let's also put guys on that gas. Let's try and take a fourth base here as well. And, oh, he's coming to me, actually. Okay, okay. All right. Now, he's got some sentries in there, but we're still going to stick to the... I'll make a few Ravagers, just two. And I guess we can focus fire. So we're just going to try and move on top here and go for the Overwhelm. I was about to drone behind this, but since we've got a big fight out here... Ah, I'll drone anyway. Did I get the Spire down or no? Was my Spire building? Oh, apparently my spire wasn't building. I built the gas in the fourth base, but forgot to put the spire down. <laughs> That's the most important part. So I'm at a bit of a dilemma here, actually, because I was focusing on teaching you guys the basic build, and I didn't read through my notes before loading this game up. So... With the advanced version... We're actually going to rush four gases and a lair and a roach horn so quickly. And you know what? I think that makes perfect sense. Now, what can we do if we are running into players who are doing DTs as hard as Maxan every game? As hard as, as hard as Brainless? I mean, we're just going to make an adjustment. We just change this to 430, right? We'd just be like... Build those spores 15 seconds earlier, right? Because you don't want to have to handle that situation the way I did, where he snipes the spore before it finishes and stuff. 
What's another thing that I could have done there though? What's another thing that I could, I could have held position my units to block it. I didn't really want to do that because I felt like it would be a bit too fancy for most of you guys to pull off. But um, check it out. So we did build spores at 445, we started them and his DTs come in. But if you grab all your units and you click them on the spore and then go hold position, he's going to have to kill the units before he gets the, kills the spore. And that's going to be really, really nice. Notice I kind of did it, but I did it a bit late. So he's already on it. And if you just get, hey man, a few seconds difference, ooh, makes a big diff. But we're going to change the build. So instead, guys, on four minutes, let's take a look. Imagine we're going gas roach horn, but also gas gas and a lair. And that is going to make it really hard for us to afford our next round of drones. But it means we're going to have quick roach speed, really quick... Uh, Gases up so we can afford tons of roaches, add ravages as needed. It's going to be really clean and crisp. Obviously, we're playing against Stargate. It's going to be a little bit different, though. If you have enough lings, you could even spam click a building when the DTs are on it to force them off the building. Oh, yeah. That, yeah, yeah. Lings can kind of, like, shove through Dark Templar if they're not on hold position. There's, like, a funny thing you can do. But, uh, but that's definitely it. So, uh... If we'd seen Stargate, guys, we would not have the second gas or the Roach Horn at all. Instead, we would have built two more queens and spores in each base, and then we would delay the Roach Horn and the gases in the lair. So the idea here is notice that these timings are just flipped. So if we verse ground, so Twilight or Robo, we're going to go Roach Horn, three gases, lair, and then delay the spores. And if it's verse air, we just flip those two around. You had two queens as well. Whereas you don't really need the two extra queens first ground. You can stay on just three queens if you really want. Up to you guys. All right, guys, we got ourselves a 4K Terran, uh, 4K Protoss player here in Totoro. I will be playing one more game against and uh, seeing how it goes. So, all right, guys, we're starting to teach some more advanced stuff here. A lot more details. This is pretty high level. As you get to Diamond 1, it's almost Masters League. Uh, let's show you guys how it works. So, Overlord is going to go just off center. And the reason we want to put that there, guys, is if they go Stalker, that Overlord, it can skirt the edge of their main base and find safety. Now, we're sending this drone out about five seconds late. So, if we do get blocked, that's going to be a bit of a bummer, as I said. So, we might have to go 18 hatch. Yeah, we'll go 18 hatch here. It's a very dark way of playing. Um... Dark is the least efficient top-level pro gamer in the world. His opening suck, and that is just a fact. Feels weird saying it as a commentator, but it's totally true. So, you know. <laughs> like, it's just, it is what it is, man. Now, they could cannon rush you, right? They could do, like, the rocker, force you to take the other base, then cannon rush, but we rely on the Overlord to spot that. In this case... If, if we've been blocked from taking our expansion on location, then uh, then we don't bother sending a drone preemptively to attack said probe. It's only if they let me take this hatchery, because a cannon set up here is much more dangerous. Cannons at my third can get a cancel, but they can't like build a robo and then kill me with immortals and batteries and stuff like that, the way it being set up in my natural chem. Alright guys, so do we have all of our bases set up? Fourth there, fifth there. We're going to build that 20th Overlord, which is going to go up on this left side, right? This is going to go to the middle. Uh, Overlord, actually, rather than going the left, we'll go out there. Build two lings. You can see I'm supply blocked here because this hatchery was late, and that's why sending the hatchery in on time is very important. So this is going to be my defensive lings. They'll help clear up the natural. And those two lings never started building, so actually, never mind. These two lings will go there and then into the base, okay? We forgot to pull off gas, so we're doing that a bit late. A little bit sloppy on the build this game, guys. Let's try and stay focused here. And uh, we can go and build the expansion with this drone, okay? So remember, normally 32 third hatch, same as always, guys. And if you want, you can split these lings up, just so they're coming in from different sides. But if you send them in from the same angle, it's totally fine. So... Keep building drones, that goes there. We go third hatch on 32. Then we get the third queen and then the overlord. Same pattern as always, guys. Now, if they block your lings, then fair enough. We'll just send the overlord in, okay? That overlord didn't start yet, so we're gonna build it now. Keep building drones. 
and check it out. We see a Twilight getting chrono boosted and a gateway. Now what's interesting about that is there's no Robo yet. So time for advanced uh, scouting reaction. Notice I built two drones and rallied to them gas manually. I'm going to send this guy over there, get some more creep going. Keep putting drones and overlords on the edges as well now. One on the bottom right, one on the top left. That'll spot air units coming in, guys. And what does an advanced scouting tell us? Advanced scouting here says, Hey, if you don't have a robo, you might have a proxy pylon. So we're going to send those two links to scout for proxies. And remember, guys, we want to go roach horn, second gas, lair, and straight up to four gas. All on four minutes. I'm doing it a bit early. Just because I, I kind of had the money. I was like, hey, why not? We might as well. We're droning still. So we're going four gases here. This queen can go and become the injection queen for that one. I am going to build a few more lings here just to get across the map and see what's up. And see here, we're just trying to keep on droning. And we're at 47 drones. So that's a little high, guys. If you're up against a two base build like this, remember you want to be building roaches the moment that roach horn is done. Other than whatever Zerglings you have out. Just put these Zerglings out on the watchtowers. So, notice I didn't have enough money to spend all my lava there on roaches. Which is why this is going to be a bit harder than it needs to be. Likewise, I'm close to supply blocked. Whereas we should have more of a supply gap free. So you see this lava? This is way too many workers, 47. Um, in general, you want to make those eight safety roaches by default the moment that roach warren's finished, and then you can go back to droning. Now, because we see there's lots of adepts here, I could also make more roaches, or we can play it the most default normie way and just stay on eight roaches like a dumbass, which is what I'm going to do. And go, huh, this is not very good, is it? So we're going to pull back a bit. Start roach speed. A few more overlords. Roaches! And uh, we've got one queen out here and some roaches. And this is where you want to prepare because you know they're going to shade past. So you want to try and fight them further out. And the moment they turn to run, you chase them back. Ideally, we split our roaches up at this point, okay? So we're building lots and lots of roaches, trying to defend here against the adepts. And this is where you go, okay, number one, intercept them as early as you can. So you want to force that shade out soon. But as soon as he turns back, pull back, pull back, pull back. Try to build roaches, try to build roaches. Okay, at this point, guys, we've got to split our roaches up. These guys are going to be on a different control group. So we've got roaches up the front and roaches at the back, okay? Keep injecting. Keep building overlords. I don't know if he's got a base or not, so we'll tell that overlord to poo there. These guys, intercept him, force that shade out, and then you can click this on these guys, okay? So notice, oh, there's immortals here. It's a big all in, guys. Make ravages, because ravages are just the best answer to anything. If your opponent's attacking you guys, make as many roaches and ravages as you can. There are situations where there are other units that are also good. But notice that we can just use corrosive bile spread across his army. Now, if I was pro microing, I wouldn't want those immortals landing hits on me, guys. And we are going to try and hit the, uh, the warp prism. And when there's an ability to focus on the immortals, you definitely do want to do it. Because they do a lot more damage than the adepts. But um, I could have shot, pulled back, shot, pulled back, shot, pulled back, and the immortals wouldn't have been landing many hits. Would be a better way of doing that. So I do like this quick four gas, the lair, the roach warren. I think it's a good one size fits all way of doing it. It's going to get us through all the way to Grandmaster, probably. But <clears throat> definitely you want to be careful with what's going on. And in this case, Warp Prism was very late, as I said. Yeah, yeah, very late Warp Prism. Interesting build. Um, so you go for the Lair, the Roach Warren, three gases all at once. So, super cool. Now, I should have been building Spores at 445, and I forgot to do that. So that's definitely a big mistake, guys. Uh... <laughs> so funny because this is so close to what I normally do but like not quite there's just a few things that are a bit weird now definitely we want to build spores now if you can't though you do almost have the lair ready 
So you see how there is an option here. If you make your lair as quickly as possible at like 345, you can skip the spores entirely for the Dark Templar, right? So if you make your lair 335, 340, you're always going to be able to make an Overseer in time and you could skip the spores. So there is a choice here. If you're struggling against DTs or you're never running into DTs, you know, you might be like, man, I just don't even need detection. Who gives a shit? Don't even care about it. Or other times you're like, why am I building spores if I can just make an Overseer a few seconds later anyway? Why counter that one thing with two different options? Why not just make an Overseer? So there's an option here to make this build even tighter and less general. I've given you guys a real batched up four minute make Roach Warren, three gases and a lair. Doop de doop, real straightforward. But we can see how speeding that lair up a little bit, nice advanced tweak that we could do. Make an Overseer whenever that's finished each time, bam. We're pretty safe against DTs. So that makes perfect sense, doesn't it, right? That actually makes perfect sense to get that layer a bit quicker um, to, to allow you to do that. So that's definitely an option there. And I think I think we'll do that, in fact. I think I might even write that just as standard. Uh, where's my... Hello? Learn StarCraft? So verse ground. Let's make it even more advanced, guys. 345 lair, and then we can get that. You can see how, with understanding, we can add more and more details, and we can go for an overseer straight away, right? So, cross that one out. Awesome. That's going to be really nice. What's up, Sneak Josh? I'm from Australia, just started playing SC2. Yeah, absolutely. I'm, I'm, I'm super inactive with the clan. Think of me as like a mascot sneak, Josh. I cast fun games that the guys share with me. I cheer them on a little bit occasionally. I'm, I'm not super active as like a clan member, but I'm more just like the, the mascot of the clan. But they're a great group of, of people who play clan matches. They practice with each other sometimes. Some of them play up against other clans or play these team leagues where you play like a single map that you organize with your opponent once each week. There's a lot of cool shit you can do. If you guys want to join the clan, hit exclamation mark clan in the chat um, or exclamation mark discord. You can get in there and the, if you just message one of the clan managers in the discord, they've got a clan manager tag. They'll fill you in on what's, what goes on in the clan and they'll run you through the uh, the test, the initiation to check if you're a dickhead or not. Uh, very hard test and, um, <laughs> and get you in there. And if you guys get kicked out of the clan, don't worry about it. You can always re-sign up. Uh, we cull the members periodically because otherwise you just have inactive people filling up the clan spots and there's limited clan spots um and you end up with like 20 different clan tags because you can only have 100 in each clan tag in in game and they're all inactive and it just becomes dumb so yeah Can you play old style Soul Train or an or a Blink Immortal all in? I don't really know what the Blink Immortal all in is, but against a Roach, I mean, we're not playing a Roach Max Bromo Sapien. Some of these attacks have been a bit later than they're meant to be. It's a 52 drone Roach Ravager Link timing. This is not a Roach Max. In general, waiting to be maxed is not a good idea before attacking. Um, just keep that in mind. But yeah, you could play Stalkers, you could play Immortals. It doesn't really matter what style you play, it's more just about how solid your, your play is, I think. And, <clears throat> if you use your defense correctly. Alright guys, we've got some 5k MMR players that we're going to be playing against. People who are around Masters 2, Masters 1, or low GM. And we're going to show you guys the build. We're going to take the chains off a little bit. And we are going to go for that slightly quicker lair that we realize as we do the more advanced version. Hey, I don't want to build spores and a quick lair. Let's just do one of those. This is something which some very high level players like Cham favors if he sees a Twilight Council opening. So let's check it out and show you guys what is going on. Let's try not to play too fast. Uh, fourth base there, fifth base there. Let's just get everything set up nicely from the start. That drone trying to rally to a bad spot. Just make sure these drones are nicely split up. And you can see, I always like to click these drones to a mineral patch that doesn't already have a buddy on it. Okay, so check it. First Overlord goes in and then just hits, sits there, ready to skirt along the edge. We build two drones, and 35 seconds just after you build those two drones, guys, send the drone to the third base. Now, you want to watch that here, and you want to say to yourself, okay, uh, no probe, no probe. And you want to kill that cleaning bot. <laughs> and we get to put our hatchery down. 
So there we go. You see how just these, these advanced little adjustments to the high level meta coming in are going to help us out. Also, Probe comes in. Okay, we'll attack him because guess what? He could be cannon rushing. My hatchery's already gone down, right? So, remember, if my hatchery gets blocked and I take it on the third, I would not chase him. But in this scenario, I, uh, I will. So we go gas and then pull. And, I mean, if he's not going to do anything, I don't really need to worry too much. We can just mine minerals on the natural. And uh, these guys can rally on the gas. He could still cannon rush me technically at this time, but it would be one of the very late ones. And he's so far away out there that I think it's a bit too late. So I think we're good, guys. We're going to just go back to mining up here. We've got the extra drone coming in. <clears throat> All right, let's do it. It's looking good, fam. Very tight opening. Let's get the 20 Overlord. That's going to go out this left side. See any depths coming in from there. This Overlord will go forward. See any depths coming down the middle. And we'll get another Overlord over to the right in a little bit. Two Queens, four Zerglings. Remember, I put them both on Control 2. And then I take these guys and I steal those onto a different Control group. Next, we're building drones and pulling off gas. We build two drones and then we pull off gas. Two workers off gas. And remember, this guy goes to the third. Along with those two lings. So remember, we send two lings there, and then two ling, uh, one ling there, one ling there, and then we queue them up. And our overlord... Oh, that's a stalker. So remember, if there's a stalker out, you run along the edge of the base, okay? And what are we going to do? Third hatchery. And we can run this way as well. Now we can run these other two wings across as well. Try and get them in there. And this overlord needs to try and get out. So what are we doing behind this, guys? Trying to get these lings in. So notice how it's like, hey, you can't... You can't block all the lings and also stop the overlord. That's the whole plan. Now I've already got overlords on the way, but uh, I didn't get my third queen because I was busy microing. That's fine. And you can see he's got an adept out here now as well. That's fine. My, my lings are just going to go home. And I've sacrificed the overlord in, which is seeing double stargate. Oh my lord, guys. So I'm going to build a little pack of lings here. Just like th three, four more. Just so I can kill like an adept and stalker maybe. Just put those lings on each expansion to see if he expands. And I have no idea what he's going to build out of those. But we will find out. Hopefully we have an overlord about to pop. Because otherwise that's going to be very annoying. And we do. There we go. Okay, so we've got our lings there. Third base is up. Now, I still am like, man, what is he going to build out of that? Will it be Phoenix? Will it be Oracles? We really don't know. What I do know is I'm going to pull back the Overlords anyway. Just in case it is Phoenix. We're going to build a Queen on each base. Uh, we'll build a Spore in the main. Even though we probably could delay it since we saw the Stargate timing. Um, we don't want there to be too many variables. And got a fifth queen on the way. We're building as many drones as we can. Because against two Stargates, you're going to have to really watch out for that. Now these lings are going to come in. See if we can maybe kill the adepts. Yeah. Okay. Not bad. Let's get the spores up. So those oracles, if they are going to be arriving, it'll be soon, man. Oh, that was not good. He microed. Oh, I'll make a lair right now. And... Okay, so he's made some oracles. Gonna try and deny this expansion. And guess what, guys? Roach Warren, second gas. Third gas, fourth gas. So we're still gonna stick to the game plan here. Just for now. But we're already past the drone count. And we're not gonna stick to the game plan. Because he's playing air. So why would we stick to the game plan? No, no, no. So we're gonna go straight to the muter stage of it, okay? And potentially use Corruptors while we scout what the actual follow-up is, okay? So let's get lots of gas here. That's going to give us lots of potential ways to punish him. We'll take that fourth base straight away. And uh, we'll try to scout what's going on. Let's get the Spire down. And that should be way better. Okay, cool. So we're just going to kill a dude there. That's fine. He's making a plus one or something. Where's our overlords, man? 
All right, let's make an overseer. We're going to send that in. Let's make roach speed. And we're just going to top off our saturation here, okay? So, okay, a few more guys there. And it is going to be Phoenix. Okay, so what we want to do is we want to grab all of these guys and try to bring these queens together. Hang on. Notice how we are just trying to focus fire there. And we're going to swap to mass air, okay? So when your opponent does play air, you do need to have your own favorite plan against it. For me, my favorite plan is always to play uh, mass air versus their mass air. If you can take a fifth base and just immediately take the gases there. Um, and I'll even rally the drones there straight away. See, we've gone straight to 80 drones. Sounds very high, but... And he's just going to be running around with this massive phoenix as being a, a dickhead, isn't he? So, you know, obviously we're not going to build muters into that, but we'd build uh, corruptors. Now, you could go armor there. Armor's pretty powerful, but I'm just going to go attack, keep it pretty normal for now. Build a few more spores on these. And... Okay, there we go. So we just tried to spam some transfusers out. And we're building corruptors now, okay? Still got some lings out on the map. And uh So we're gonna get about maybe just a few less guys than he has. And we're still trying to see if he's transitioning into ground. So I'm gonna go. 16 Corruptors, because that's a crazy Phoenix count. So we're going to go 16 Corruptors. And then we're going to start building Muters after that, okay? We're going to already drop that count down. We're going to have an Overseer as well. And you can see he's still going Air. Yes, he's got Gateways and a Twilight, so he might go Charge as well. But I think if we can... Uh, as all these Corruptors rally out, we should be able to go forward. And we're going to work this angle where we can run in and pee, run in and pee, and uh, generally be annoying. So, mass muters on the way behind this, guys. Let's make sure we keep taking bases. We probably should have already had the six base gas up, to be fair. Let's get armor. I'm going to build some roaches on the ground. And notice I'm just control clicking the muters to pull them back. Okay. Obviously it can be very annoying with battery overcharge. Lots more muters on the way here. The muters are going to just fight the stalkers for now. While the, uh... Corruptors chase down everything else. And we're just remaxing on nothing but muters, guys. And notice we do shift-click them. And you might think, well, this seems very wasteful. But he's on three base, and I'm on five. So that's, that's why we're allowed to be this wasteful, okay? Now, we killed the oracles. He doesn't know if I'm remaxing this or not. We're just going to rally onto that one. And you can see the roaches will do pretty well here. We built to deal with the ground army. And we just focus the phoenix with the muters. And then we go back to nothing but muters. Well, we should probably build corruptors as well, right? And this is how you play mass air. Um, lots and lots of gases. About 85 drones is pretty good. You can play it on a bit less. Uh, I'm going to attack that right side. And if you can just move on top of the phoenix, that's what you really want to be doing there. But... Uh, 
Definitely something where if someone's playing, you know, pure air like this, scouting's the key. Scouting's the key. Realizing early enough and then having that set play of like, oh, okay, I'm going to take all the gases and we're going to make corruptors to beat the phoenix and, you know, kind of go from there. So obviously he's trying to defend with good phoenix micro, but you can see that he is just annihilate once there's only a few of them. So corruptors to counter the... Phoenix, and then the Muters to fight everything else. And we it was very important that we traded at that moment. Because if we gave him another minute to add some Archons on the ground, it's really hard for the Muter Corruptor to fight suddenly. But because we had that fifth base gas up so quickly, and this is why whenever you're playing this style, this is how you expand. You box drones, you build gas, hatch, hatch, gas, gas, hatch, gas, gas. And that's going to be really huge. Now, I could have gone Mass Hydra. I could have absolutely played a Hydra Lurker Viper style. Um, the Phoenix will be useless once I Parasitic Bomb them and have enough Hydras and stuff. I mean, there's, there's a lot of ways you can do it. Hydra Bane is actually a, a very decent option for someone who plays two Stargate Phoenix into ground. But if they play into air, I do. I find it's like, it can work. It's just, it's, it's a little awkward, but you just kind of end up basically doing one big Hydra all-in timing. It can still definitely work. It's just whenever you're on Hydras verse, like Carrier, you, you're on a timer. Because as their upgrades and their unit count grows, you will be in big trouble. So um, he played really, really good there in terms of building on up. Obviously a bit of a weird opening, but the Overlord plus the Lings, that advanced scouting technique, it's very high level, but it's very good. If you guys want to just stick to the single Overlord, you can do that, but there's some uh, issues. Did you have a control group and an air control group? Yeah, yeah, that's all. I mean, I have my other groups. I have my, my injecting queen group as well. My inject slash creep, oh, sorry, not my injecting, my creep slash defense queen group as always. And if I needed a run by squad slash defense squad, I, I had a bunch more control groups available. I just have no use for them there. Now you could go corruptor key and muter key. I prefer to just control click them using either the wireframe at the bottom, which Ryan Shooter in an interview recently had a proper name for. He said, that's the, not command card. It's, I can't remember what he called it. There's a, there's a proper name for it that he used in one of the interviews recently. And I was like, oh, that's the technical name. I've always been like, what is the, what is this wire? I just call it the wireframe at the bottom. The, um, I think it's like the unit panel, I think is what he called it. Unit panel. So either using the unit, unit panel or on screen, it's just get the, get the corruptors to focus fire the Phoenix and just keep pulling the muters behind the corruptors. So if they want to focus fire the muters, it means they can't kind of move and shoot, run away at the same time. <coughs> Thanks, Boomy. Yeah, um, if I gave you another minute, very scary for me. But I'm on five base, you're on three base. As long as I start trading there before the Protoss transitions off that into ground and my Muta Corruptor becomes much worse, then we're okay. All right, guys, we're going to play another game here versus 4.7k Masters Protoss player. Let's grab another drone, send it to the third. Nice and early. And so... But, uh, I think a lot of people are trying to... Well, we can answer this question quickly. Because I think a lot of people really... They, they try to do things a bit too fancy. They're trying to like blink back individual stalkers while throwing disruptor shots out. Whereas it's like, just get a bit more observer vision. If you're struggling using stalker disruptor, just get some more vision. So you can see what you're aiming at ahead of time. And uh, don't bother with blink. Just have two robos. So that you can really early so you can have more disruptors. More disruptors, more shots, more practice, more chance to get good with those shots as well. I didn't have the money for the spawning pools. Yeah, that's why I didn't mind wasting a little bit of time attacking the probe. We can just, if they try to harass you a bit, you can chase them. But remember, in general, I want to chase them because why'd you let my hatchery get down, dude? Are you going to cannon me? And if I saw a second probe coming in, that would be a clear sign that my opponent's up to no good. About a minute 45, if they haven't cannon rushed you guys, it's not happening. Stop trying to make fetch happen. Stop trying to make delayed cannon rushes happen. Um, yeah. Alright. Wait, you're still gonna harass me? Get out of here! You silly Protoss player! You get out of here, you! You naughty. 
You see he's chronoing that. Um, if you want, you can look at this. See that not spinning? Indicates it's probably Stargate saving the gas for that. Now what we're going to do, guys, is we're going to send these two lings, as always, across the map. This overlord out here. Other overlord is out here, just checking they're all going to the right positions. I didn't mess anything up. For once, I didn't. Sending a drone over there to the third. Inject, inject, build third hatchery. So we don't want to lose our lings, so we'll just pull those back. Third hatch is down. What do we do after the third hatch? Guys, we build a third queen and then an overlord. It's so amazing. And this overlord can just go to safety. Because, uh, we're going to trouble. And what tech is that? What is that? Stargate? Okay. We'll just try to queue up so we can see what unit gets built. It's alright, we don't see. It's so fine. I like to build a few more lings just in case they keep harassing me. The first creep tumor, we inject the main, we keep building drones. Of course, can uh, take two of these drones and uh, from the main and rally them onto the gas. It's time for that. So, guys, we saw a Stargate, so it's time to do our Stargate response. Oh my. First of all, get those lings to kill anything still out on the map. All we're doing is just injecting, building queens. We can get this fourth queen started early, guys. And you know what? We can even start spores early. I'm not going to. Too early, just a few seconds early. We see an oracle coming. And uh, we're going to build a spore in each base. And we're just going to keep droning here, keep droning. And just make sure we leave one ling at each base while our guys are there. Now we're going to put one tumor down. And we're ready with our queens. So notice we've got two queens here as well. So if he goes along the back, he would have taken a lot of damage. He doesn't. Good job. Okay, we're rallying to the third now, guys. Spreading our creep. Building that fifth queen. So those two extra queens are on the way. Building overlords. Looks like... Oh, he did take a third. Now, I've seen... I was about to say, I haven't seen a second Stargate unit, and that could be a sign of aggression. We're just going to kill this guy and then run away. That's fine. Oh, it's 4.45, guys. Time to go Roach Warren Lair Forgas. Alright. That's fine. Now, against Stargate, it's going to be harder to hit a 52 drone timing, isn't it? Because we delay everything to get all these spores and these queens up to be safe. I still think it's going to be a good idea. It's just going to be... Naturally, you'll probably hit it with a few more drones. Three oracles, big sign of macro fam. All I'm doing, building lots and lots of overlords right now, guys. And we're waiting for that roach run to finish so I can uh, make some more stuff. Uh-oh. Let's build another queen. Those guys look very horny. You guys want to see some pro shit? Notice how that didn't block the base the way he wanted it to. I am playing with 160 ping, so I didn't completely dodge it, but it's close enough. I'm gonna start roach speed, and what are we doing, guys? No drones. We're doing that 52 drone timing that I talked about. That is our standard plan in every single situation. All we're doing is building roaches. Oh, oracles coming over. Careful. So notice this ring of vision is so good for seeing what's up. Let's send an overseer through just to check what's going on. Um, I guess we can break some rocks as well, actually. I'm gonna break these rocks. I don't want him to see my army, though. So we've got to hide the army, guys. Hide, hide, hide. We should not have been out there killing rocks this early. We don't want him to see that we're massing units, right? So even if we're doing a very basic pre-planned attack that you might think isn't good for high level... Oh, just, just, <laughs> you can see these guys, but no one else, okay? God damn it. Anyway, roach speed's almost done. Um... What do we do as that's getting ready, guys? We go double gas. Double gas, yes, queen. And he's going mass stalker, which is uh, definitely a choice. I'm gonna make some ravages and lings. And we're gonna try and um, come in from the side with at least some of these guys, okay? Because he's doing gateway man. Still building lots of guys here. Oh, he's such a piece of shit. Oh, 
Oh, he doesn't quite kill it. He doesn't quite kill it. Quick, 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 get up there. All right, guys, we're trying to chase him down now. Nothing but lings. I'm going to try and build that spire behind it while we put guys on gas. Okay. Oh, he recalled. Okay, so we're going to go break these rocks rather than headbutting into the gateway cannon. Notice, here's a trick. Move the spore from there, build a new spore there. Going to build some drones here because remember, we don't want to be all in with this move. We are a bit supply blocked, which sucks. <laughs> oh. Notice we're just going to try and take a big fight here. Behind this. Drones. 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 These guys ran into stasis traps, so we'll try and run away. He has a fourth base. Alright, we're gonna try and fight away from the battery. Oh my god, this is painful. That's crazy. I can't believe he had a fourth already. I'll drone those gases on the fourth, but nothing beyond that, okay? You can't survive against this onslaught of roaches. The roaches were shoved in. Oh, he's now using his oracle lasers. He should have done that a long time ago, guys. <laughs> We're building the muters. And guess what? We need to rebuild our roachling army, okay? And we need to go to the double upgrades. Because that's the plan. Let's pull back these overlords so we don't just give free kills to our opponent. Put some uh, changelings out to see if he's coming for me. Pull the overlord back. Pull the overlord back. Inject, inject, inject. Um, yeah, I don't even think we needed to take the gases, to be real. So you can see, yeah, he's got zealots getting ready. We're just transfusing away. Oh my god! So we're just going to go up the guts towards his natural. Because he'll have lots of cannons on the edges, but he shouldn't have them elsewhere, right? So guys, these roaches and these queens are all going to sit here. And then everything else will go to this side, okay? So we're using hold position, and we're going to go up there and use hold position again. Okay. Okay, we're going to try and fight here. He's, he's doing a great job. Use those guys. Alright, let's go. Pull the drones. Man, the, the stasis trap spam is probably the dirtiest shit ever in this current meta, and it's the best part of it. It's the most annoying to deal with, man. But, Muta Harass is also very good. Very hard for him to deal with. You! Get out of my base! So, if there's cannons, don't A move. Start focus firing if you weren't already doing that, guys. I see something over there. What is that? Is that a prism? I think it was. <laughs> Oi! <laughs> Alright, let's get these 1-1 uh, one -one upgrades up. I think I have plenty of gas, so that's fine. Let's try and take a fifth base. What? Oh, shit. She. Alright, I'm gonna send a counterattack down the right. And I'm gonna start building lots of lings, and I'm gonna make a lot of ravages. Because I have lots of gas, and we're kind of uh, staying low tech, because we want to keep trading with our opponent. Don't want to give him time to add, like, storm or anything like that. It's gonna scale. Because my work account's below 66, though, we do need to be careful. Yeah. And this also is going to run into zealots. They're always going to do zealot runbys with this style. Okay, so I think we just go pure Roach Ravager, and we just hit with 1-1 one, one for one big, not quite all in, but close enough. Uh, we're also getting these queens to like inject the other hatcheries while rebuilding one or two of them. We're still going to spread a little bit of creep here. Uh, opponent's playing a very good game. It's kind of funny because normally I'm so much more fluid with my PvZ, 
But because I'm trying to like follow this preset plan, it's really interesting to um, to play this against a player who's playing such a high level game of StarCraft where he's, he's clearly really knows what he's doing with this style. And uh, it's just fascinating to play against. Uh, let's break this rocks down. So, um, oh, hello. Oh, stumbling into each other. Hello. <laughs> okay, yeah, that's kind of annoying. Okay. Yeah, Mutas can clean that up. That's fine. Okay. See if we can get the lings in. So I'm going to just steal those, click them in the main. And then these guys can uh, use their biles. So you can click these, and here's a here's a bait. See those zerglings twerk? That's what we just did there. These roaches also twerk. So this is the old lead them on a chase, lead them on a merry chase, run the drones away. The muters are going to go for some more run by harass now, and all of these guys could go back over there. Oops, misplace that one. Oh man. Okay. Okay, let's go. Trying to spread the vials. Kill it. Kill them all. Bermudas are doing pretty good though. Ah, oh, is it enough though? He's fighting like an absolute champion. I'm run! I'm gonna build drones for that base in the middle of this, guys. That's what we call being a donkey. That's me right now. Right, we're gonna also take these guys and send those across as a separate run by a squad. The muters, their job right now is just to survive, because I don't think he kept expanding. If he did, I think I'd be dead. And uh, as long as he hasn't expanded, he should be out of money. So We're going to make melee, because obviously Zerglings should be pretty good in some of these scenarios. Um, we're going to try and just put drones across some of these bases. Oh, I built a few more there than I meant to. Just go back to still building mostly Roaches and Ravages. Whenever your opponent's desperate or kind of feeling a bit all in, that's when these sort of units become just absolute god tier, Roaches and Ravages. Because if your opponent has to attack into you, they just, they're not as strong. That's just kind of how they work as a unit, you know? Um, okay, these guys are all going to join up. Yeah, we can try to take this bottom right. At this point, I could lose to... um. TTs, so that's something that I'm kind of just shoring my defenses up, because I feel very confident other than that. And, uh, yeah. I think we just build more roaches, more ravages. We just keep trading. Don't give him time to add storm or disruptors or something like that that's gonna severely mess up the, uh, the math. What are his upgrades as well? He, he did play single forge, so it's not like he has these supercharged units that are just insanely hard to beat. Um, you know, my upgrades are pretty good as well. I got, I got one one. All right, so I guess we attack through the middle. I think is probably the way to go, or maybe maybe the right side. I'm gonna send a roach on the watchtower. I'm gonna build a pack of zerglings right now, and uh, we will take some gases here, and uh, also just kind of put a few guys on these. Get the gases going. So notice you can try and bait them in, so you kind of use the choke points here. Now we, we of course were not expecting this. I'm bringing everything in on top of the uh, disruptors now. I was not expecting those disruptors. The first unexpected disruptors are often the most powerful. And there we 
we go. Just a bit of a spready there. As soon as I saw those disruptors, you could see I was already ready for it. Just going to build more roaches, more ravages. The muters are absolutely tearing up his probe line right now. And there we go. Looks like we got it. Just keep pulling back. We knew those disruptors were coming off cooldowns. So we were very prepared for that. Do a fancy split. Um, this was a really stressful game. He he played way too way too good economy. Too much stuff going on. Our 52 drone attack did not do enough, I guess. We never even got a chance to really do it. Um, so there's an argument here, which I think there's, I know the answer to. When they do this push um with this style stalkers are actually the fucking worst unit in the game at base trading so i actually think you give up your fourth it's not really a primary concern you're on 52 drones you definitely don't need it and i think you just continue across the map and go for their their production not even the fourth i think you kill the wall i think you kill like the, the cyber you think you just get in because the thing is the stalkers can't punish you in the same way so if the Stalkers are here and your units are here moving out, if you commit to a base trade, you're always going to win because the Stalkers are like, derp, and they blink in. And what are they going to achieve there? Are they going to take forever to kill a hatchery? Lings, drones, roaches popping out are going to fight really well. Stalkers are good at picking off units and pulling back and picking off units and pulling back. They're not good at really base trading at all because they don't do enough damage. So best case scenario, he snipes the hatch and recalls. But it's such an unimportant hatchery, it's 300 minerals, right? We can just pop another one down, it doesn't matter. We're on 52 drones. And um, chances of him recalling all of his units properly, correctly, to the clean nexus, to the correct nexus um, in time, without us already having killed his wall and being on top of his shit, is very low. And you can see that because we didn't do that, we let him get up the fourth base, the cannon, the battery, and he played really well from there and built a great economy and the zealots were coming in. Oracles were very annoying with their stasis traps. The Oracle stasis traps are just the most annoying thing in the world, I gotta tell you guys. Uh, Oracles in general. Oof, such a pain in the ass. Um, yeah, I probably shouldn't have stopped to break the rocks. Um, we could have got in there before charge was done. It still felt like very good trades for me, but because I was supply blocked and a bit slow to drone behind this, you could see that we should have been droning during the attack a bit sooner. We start droning during it, but... Uh, could have done that a little bit sooner and it would have given us a much smoother follow-up also that stasis trap basically saved his bacon uh that's me not paying attention that he put a stasis trap there because otherwise he would have lost way more stalker sentry and um and that would have been pretty huge yeah as it was it's like cool i'm on 70 workers but it's actually a very scary moment he might have been able to kill me if he just headbutted here I'm actually fairly certain if he headbutts there and just warps in nothing but zealots and just rallies across the map, I lose the game. But he didn't know I was going muters, I guess. And kind of uh, went for the default. And that's all just because my production was so paused for so long on 52 workers. Um, but yeah, the muters, we did a lot of hold position micro over mineral lines, especially if like this setup, I often held position my muters here so they're not in range of the cannons. This setup at old position here, not in range of the cannons. Um, sometimes I just click them in these bases as well, so they do good damage. But you can see, really great play from um, from Cognite, who made me work incredibly hard for that. And uh, that game got really messy, but I like having the fast tech of early roach speed. It gives you these really scary roach timings, and you can swap into the muters behind it and then swap back into the roaches. And it makes the game a lot messier than Protoss players generally want it to be. Protoss players in general, they want time to build up. They want time to get the splash damage and get all the pieces that they need. But um, yeah, yeah it, was, it was really well played. So I hope you guys have, have learned something from this weird learn StarCraft Bronze DGM stream where we kind of take one build and we speed run you through all the different skill levels of it. Um, let me know how you guys would add to this show what you'd like to see more of. Obviously, we'll be trying it for different builds and different matchups and all that sort of stuff. But uh, definitely, uh, definitely one to to kind of uh, I want to hear you guys' feedback on what you guys think would be super epic to see. 
So um, yeah, let me know anything you change to the format to teach it a bit differently. You can tell I'm kind of figuring it out as I go and I'm like, oh, it's fascinating to like take one sort of style and then speed run it through these changes. And uh, yeah, it's it's not quite the same appeal as a regular bronze to jam, but hopefully it teaches you guys. <clears throat> Excuse me. Hopefully it teaches you guys a lot in the process of checking it out. Um, I don't think there was that many kills, but you got to remember these are Protoss kills. Protoss kills are very valuable. It's a good, good number of kills. Good number of kills. We got them down to 43 probes. The muters definitely did their job. Would 2 to 3 Phoenix be good for the muters? Always, always build Phoenix versus muters because I could have held the key down as well. They hold the muter key down. Stalkers don't do good versus that. Um, I'd say until uh, against a lot of opponents, though, you can get by without building anything like Phoenix. Yeah, you can definitely get by without it. You just want to make sure you have your control groups well set up. So you should like have like a, a stalker anti muter squad or something like here. I would have sent s some stalkers here, some stalkers here, some stalkers there. I'd be like, I'm hunting you motherfuckers down. Um, but otherwise, no, no, it was pretty good, dude. Pretty good Cognite. Definitely Phoenix are amazing, but they're, they're very control-oriented, so building two or three Phoenix isn't necessarily going to do that much. It's more to have the beginnings of a defense ready, but if you're already playing Mass Blink, you can absolutely get away with, with skipping it. It's just, um... Yeah. Because, like, yeah. Uh, you got battery cannons, so the Phoenix would be pretty good. I like the idea of doing tech switches to anticipate the counter for the counter. So I'd like some theory crafting of tech paths for a build. If you go muta, do you go ultra later on to anticipate Templar and Archon? Um, just back to roaches and we stay pretty all in, but definitely ultras can be really good in general. Yeah. If you're doing things that are, I mean, ultras I find are just amazing versus anything that's not immortals, right? So anything that doesn't have immortals in it ultras are god tier uh and vipers are so good against immortals that you often i think ultra viper would work a surprising amount of the time for people who think oh no it's bad it would never work but like you just abduct the three or four immortals out of their army and kill them instantly and it's like ultras kind of dominate man uh yeah on its fundamental level though i think I think what's really powerful about this style is of course the fact that protoss has the hard counter to every zerg unit but their production sucks. So the one thing you guys need to always remember is really to understand the fundamentals of how a matchup works. And as much as Zerg is so bullshit because you can build 20 muters at once, Protoss is so bullshit because they have the Phoenix, which you can get seven Phoenix with Phoenix range and they'll kill 100 mutalisks without losing a single Phoenix. And you're like, that is disgusting, right? But you got to remember how expensive that Phoenix upgrade is, the 300, 200 fleet beacon. You've got to remember just how hard it is to build those seven Phoenix off those two or three Stargates minutes ahead of time. The whole point of playing timing attacks against Protoss is it teaches you how to fucking understand how to take advantage of Protoss' weak spots. Is you build an army, you shove it across the map, you mess their shit up, they're frantically trying to get back on their feet to defend <clears throat> another wave of the same stuff, and you swap into those muters. They fly in, they wreck their face, right? Then you've got, bam, back into Roaches, Guess what? Why is the Roach Ravager follow-up quite effective? Not that this is good, was a great attack. This was a bit of an awkward one. Definitely could have used my positioning a bit better there. But uh, he's got cannons and batteries all in his bases. Often they're building Phoenix as well. None of those things are going to help against another Roach Ravager attack on the front, right? So by doing that, it's actually huge. Just the Thanks amount the Bezos, of... Oh, and then I tech switch. Oh, and then I tech switch and, and going to that next level and having it planned out ahead of time. This is not something I have to make up on the fly. Don't get me wrong. I can improve it by making little adjustments here and there on the fly. But on the base level, it's I make a big Roach Ravager Ling attack. I make a Brown of Mutas. And then I make another big Roach Ravager Ling attack. And that's awesome. If the Mutas stay alive the whole time, fantastic. I've got a, 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 an annoying squad of dickheads. Some of these Mutas were new ones that I rebuilt because I wanted to get back up to the critical mass that could one-shot probes. But you can really see that it, it just throws curveballs at your opponent, doesn't make it easy. And what do I often see amongst players who struggle versus Protoss? They make roaches, and then they make roaches, and they make roaches, and they wait to max out, and they wait for their 2-2, and then they tentatively move across the map and go, oh, 
Pig said roaches are good. Let's see if this works. Okay. And then, of course, the Protoss has had friggin' seven minutes of watching the Zerg mass roaches with their observers and oracles, and they're like, okay, I'm gonna build like eight immortals. I got four disruptors. I got six archons. And they annihilate the Zerg in the most one sided fight of all time. And I'm like, yeah. You, but if you hit three minutes earlier, he doesn't have. He's got one immortal and one disruptor. And you can just absolutely smash his army, right? But it's players giving their opponents way too much time that makes it seem really unfair. And this is, in general, StarCraft seems unfair when your opponent plays well. For every every faction. So why, why do I give the unfair example? Because you can tap into it. If you don't understand what you should be doing, I mean, you should get an idea from hearing people whine about your race. Oh man, so I could just do the thing, re... You know, even that stuff gives you an indicator outside of any fundamental understanding. It's a very valid way is to go to the StarCraft subreddits, the all things subreddit, read what your opponent's races are complaining about and struggling against and be like, cool, I'm going to go do that, man. Um, so yeah, it is uh, is definitely a thing. My friend has 244,000 points. Is there a way I can play the other six for him? Can we just redeem 50 edit emote things? I, I don't control the editing emotes, my friend. I don't know exactly how that works. So you guys are saving up to edit 50 emotes at once? Uh, I mean, I think you just do whatever you do, right? I'm not sure how the, I think you only get to, I think you edit it and you keep it for a day. To get you to cast a game of ours? I don't, I don't do any casting of games on, um, on the bacon, unfortunately, my friend. But uh, I, if you do want to hire me to cast a game, I do have a thing for that, though. I'm kind of busy at the moment, so it wouldn't be... Uh, I, I might be turning all those down in the immediate future. I'm not sure. We'll see. We're still figuring out. I've been really busy. But, um, yeah, we just have a we just have a coach. A, a lot of people go, coach my replay, and they're like, cool. It's not a cast, because often people send me half-hour replays and stuff. It, it's very much me skimming through that replay for 10 minutes, trying to really give you some actionable points on what you can improve on, trying to help out the player. And, um, you know, it's not me sitting there and casting a whole game. Any tips on dodging disruptor shots, says Crazy Critter? Uh, if you know they've got an army like this, which I didn't, then just grab half your army and attack over here and send your muters in the main and maybe, or maybe even grab a third of your army and try to run it in the natural. So a third attacks here, a third tries to run up in the natural, and then a third runs over here. And you just double, you're looking around, you're looking around, and you're like, oh, his army's here. And then, so this army is what pulls back. You just pull this back, and you just click the other guys in and let them kill shit. So th the real trick to dodging disruptor shots is you don't fucking try to dodge disruptor shots, Twitch chat! Stop pretending you're Maru or Senrol! How many times do I have to tell you? Whoa! It's like there's Terran players in the chat. They're like, oh man, I just can't spread my Marines as quick as Maru on creep versus speed banelings. And I'm like, why are you trying to spread Marines versus speed banelings on creep? It doesn't make any sense. I can't do that. You think you can do that? No, that's stupid. Spread your Marines before the fight even happens off the edge of creep. You're doing a tank push here before the Zerg even gets there. I want your Marines to be spread Fucking in little pairs and, and little triple packs and little... They, they, they spread. When the fight happens, you press stim and then you take your hands off the mouse and keyboard so you stop handicapping yourself by trying to over-micro your units. You, you cue a drop into their main base so that the units are automatically not clumped up and you micro the shit out of those eight marines if you want. Uh, obviously, memes aside, um, I legitimately... Yeah, don't be shoving your army into a choke point. If you are going to fight him... Come with a third of your army here, third, like come in from every side. And then you, once you've A moved everything, they're already naturally spread out. And then you can manually box. So you're like, oh, the disruptors are here. Cool. Two box, two box click micro is what you want to do, right? So what do you want to do? If he's here, I know he's going to drop balls on me. The moment I realize, what am I doing? I'm already ready to go box, click, box, click. So what did I just do there? I split this half of the army to run south and that half to run to the right. If I've got more space, I might be running this way directly away from the balls. I don't have a lot of room to dodge. This is a very dangerous position I found myself in. And that's it. It's not hard to do spreadies. People are like... But it's just box click, box click. A move? No, definitely not. Box click, box click. 
And you're going to see me do that. See, that those guys went that way. And then those guys went that way. So there's a lot of... I'm trying to box click them. Didn't do it perfectly by any means. Had a pretty bad position. Let's just box the units right click. Box the units right click. Box the units right click. Just move. Just move. I, I talk about it in my old, very old pig daily, how to get better micro. About how spreading out before a fight. Spreading Bane, marines versus banelings. Spreading roaches versus storm. How it all comes from the same fundamental thing, which is the ability to box and click, box and click, Bo box, click, box, click, box, click. If you can just give a box and a click quickly, you can spread a concave really quickly. And um, yeah, it's not a dumb question. Just like Blue says, actually being explicit really avoids making simple mistake for weeks on end. There's two types of StarCraft players: um, idiots and 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 people. There's people who are afraid of looking like idiots. And, uh, and there's people that get better at the game. That's, that's, that's it. That's, that's legitimate. And this is probably something which kind of, kind of is sage advice for everything, right? If you want to get better at your job or school, you can, you can be afraid of looking like an idiot or sounding like a dummy, or you can ask the stupid ass question. Something I learned when I was in university from watching mature age students. At first, I didn't get it, but I got it years later. I was like, why is it anyone that's over fucking 27 years old in university doing a, a bachelor's, doing a like introductory course, asks the dumbest questions repeatedly? I'm like, there's always some senior student, some, some mature age student in the front row of the bloody lecture asking the most inane sounding questions. And you're like, really? You couldn't figure that out for yourself? And I realized as I got older... Yeah, I mean, you just you just ask the question, and it it might just be to clarify or to reinforce your own Mom understanding. Right. You're pretty sure, but if there's an ounce of doubt in your mind, just fucking ask. Gets rid of the ounce of doubt, makes you remember it better. You're sure you're right, and then bam, those dumbass adult learners who actually weren't worried about looking like idiots, and they they weren't sitting there with some dumb idea of like, oh, there's some ego on the line of like, if you have to ask questions, you're you're lesser. Some stupid bullshit like that. And they just ask questions and they they always aced their fucking courses. And uh Yeah, they were just they just asked questions and they they aced their courses and they were they were always getting them done ahead of time and they they seemed to legitimately uh move through the the work. Yeah. What what looked like from them asking questions, I always had the impression they were dumbasses and they were gonna fail the course, but uh turns out it was the uh idiots that didn't ask any questions who stayed idiots um whereas those ones knew they were idiots and then they asked questions and they stopped being idiots and they became smart people and i was like oh you gotta work harder and stuff to 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 get ah oh okay shit so yeah good idea to ask questions when you're not sure 